Hi everyone, Heather here at Burner Babies. Um, so this video is all about poop. I know, it's a super exciting topic, but sometimes when you own a dog, poop is very important, right? A lot of things are shown in a dog's poop. So when you first pick up your puppy, your puppy may exhibit stress diarrhea. So that is why those vitamins are so important. So if you call me and your puppy is exhibiting diarrhea, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, have you given those vitamins? If your answer is no, I'm going to probably tell you that your puppy is exhibiting stress diarrhea. Stress diarrhea can last anywhere from two or three days to the full transition time, which can be up to two weeks. Um, so make sure that you try that rice blend. It's 75% cooked rice and 25% canned food. So you wanna get the minced canned food, the puppy food, and mix that with 75% white rice. Make sure you mix it up really well so that you um, can stop the diarrhea, not make it worse. But usually that does work and that does help prevent um, stress diarrhea. Now, if it lasts a fairly long time, uh, longer than that two to three days, I will request that you send a sample to your vet uh, just to check it for parasites. So the number one and number two parasites kind of flip-flop and they are Giardia and Coccidia. So both of those can be brought on by stress. So we do preventative measures here to make sure that our puppies don't go home with those pesky little parasites. But stress does tend to bring them in. So um, this advice here goes for both puppies and adults. So Coccidia and Giardia both cause diarrhea in a puppy or a dog. Sometimes they will exhibit um, a very mucousy stool. Sometimes there will be blood in the stool. Um, I can also let you know that stress can do both of those things. And so sometimes it's hard to tell if your puppy is just under stress or if it's a parasite. Um, too much fat in the diet as an adult can do those things too. So sometimes it's just important to take that stool sample to the vet and, and just verify what you're dealing with. So here's my disclaimer about Coccidia and Giardia. Number one. If your dog has been anywhere with other dogs, they're likely, they've likely been exposed to Coccidia and Giardia because 90% of all dogs, according to statistics, carry both or one of those parasites. So it's not uncommon that puppies or dogs have it, 90%. Okay, so if you take your stool sample to the vet and it's found that your puppy has either Coccidia or Giardia, don't panic. Both are very treatable and usually fairly cheap to che treat. Um, usually they're treated with either metrodinolazole, uh, Marquis, or Albon. One or all a combination of two of those. So, okay, so the vet hands you your prescriptions and says, okay, give this to your puppy for the next five or seven days, whatever it may be. Panicker also is sometimes used, which is really just a dewormer. Um, it just helps calm the intestines. And the reason that dewormer is used is because these parasites are fought by the body. They are not necessarily treated with um, medication or like an anti-parasitic medication. They are treated with your dog's own immune system, which again is why I send you those vitamins. Okay, so when you get home and you start giving the puppy or your dog the medicine, keep a good eye on those stools because the firmer, the, the, the closer the dog's stool gets to normal, the more that means that your dog's own antibodies are fighting the parasites, okay? So your vet's gonna tell you, okay, in seven days or whenever the medication is up, I'm gonna need another stool sample. Now, if you still bring in diarrhea, I'm gonna be highly suspicious of that. However, if you bring in a normal stool sample and your vet says, nope, still got it, they're gonna hand you more medication. And here's where my second disclaimer comes in. If your dog is exhibiting normal stool samples, the odds of your dog still having live parasites is almost nothing. It's almost zero, okay? So they're giving your dog medication that they really don't need. So if your vet, if you hand your dog your dog stool sample in and it's normal, and your vet says, yep, he or she still has it, the next question of yours needs to be, were the parasites dead or were they alive? Because I have seen on a handful of occasions, well, probably more than a handful of occasions, where a vet will prescribe medication 
to a dog with dead parasites in the fecal sample, okay? This is bad. So let's say this happens two or three times and your dog is on a medication because you're, you're a good dog owner. You're doing the responsible thing. You're giving the medication every day. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. Now, six months from now, you call me and you're like, Heather, my dog is exhibiting diarrhea. We've taken in stool samples. Everything's good. I just don't understand what's happening. I'm going to ask you for a history and you're going to bring up that he or she had coccidia or giardia five months ago and we couldn't get rid of it and they were on medication uh, three separate times right in a row. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do this <laughs> because your vet did the wrong thing. And what they did was over medicate your dog and completely upset their GI tract. And now you as the owner and your dog are suffering for that. So now you'll have to completely reset your dog's GI tract. Okay, and the best way to do that is with a food called Royal Canin Gastrointestinal Fiber Response. This is a prescription food. You have to get it through your vet. You can buy it on Chewy and on other places online, but you do have to get the prescription from your vet. Usually the dog has to be on the food for about two full bags, and then you can transition. You can mix the third bag with their regular food, and by the end of the third bag, they're completely back to normal. But basically what the vet did so that metrodinolazole is also a very strong anti um, an antibiotic as well as an antidiarrheal so they're giving the metrodinolazole to try to stop the diarrhea but what they're also doing by giving that is killing the good the good uh, bacteria in the intestines which now causes diarrhea so you as the owner have to reset that and get that good bacteria coming back you can also give uh, Purina Fortiflora, which is um, a probiotic. So lots of good information there. <clears throat> While you're waiting for the Royal Canaan food to come, you can give that 75%, 25% uh, canned food blend to try to soothe that stomach and try to get that diarrhea under control. But that Royal Canaan food, literally like two days and that diarrhea is gone. Um, it just really is very soothing and very calming to the whole digestive tract. So there's that. Um, if that is not the case, um, I may steer you in the direction of allergies. Burners, especially burners, the purebred burners, um, do have some allergies. We don't have a ton of allergies here, um, but it is pretty common within the breed as a whole. Uh, we have a burner here that's allergic to lamb and barley. And so she was having hair coat issues. And so uh, that's what made me do the allergy test. There's a company online called, uh, literally it's called allergytest.com. Um, it's fairly inexpensive, but they test for 350 common allergens. And um, so if, if antibiotics and the overuse of them are not the issue, I might steer you in the direction of allergies, simply because it is so predominant in the breed itself. She's my only one with allergies, um, and she does not breed Bernese Mountain Dogs, and that is why, because she has allergies. So if your dog is exhibiting a lot of diarrhea that you just can't get under control, antibiotics are my first suspect. Allergies tend to be my second suspect. Um, it could be a food allergy. It could be an environmental allergy. Um, I'm going to ask you if you started cleaning with anything new. I mean, it could be anything very slight. So I'm gonna always refer you to that Royal Canin uh, because even if your dog has allergies, that Royal Canin will stop that uh, diarrhea because obviously an allergen um, is an autoimmune response and that Royal Canin food will soothe the digestive tract if there is a autoimmune response to anything that's causing an aller or you know, if there's an allergy causing an autoimmune response to flare up that intestinal tract. So that Royal Canin food is my, gonna be my first suggestion. So also, and this is gross, I also get a lot of comments about my puppy will not stop eating their poop. Okay, this is disgusting. It literally makes me gay. I have a very weak stomach sometimes. Like I can pick up poop all day long, but to watch a, a dog or a puppy eat poop, literally it makes me gay. So <laughs> I know. Too much information right so 
puppies outgrow this. My mothers still do it. Um, and it is because they're mothers and so now it's ingrained in them that they have to pick up poop. But puppies do outgrow this. And let me tell you why puppies do this. Because their mothers do it. Their mothers clean up their poop. And so this is a learned behavior. So their puppy watches their mother clean up poop. And so they think, oh, well, my mom's doing it. So I have to do it too. It's a learned behavior. 99% of all puppies outgrow it. Just tell them no. You don't have to be mean about it. Try to keep their area clean. It really is not a big deal. Most dogs outgrow it. It's just that they watch their mother do it. It's just like going potty outside, right? Their mother teaches them we go potty outside. Unfortunately, their mother also teaches them that we clean up our own poop. I clean up, you know, she's like, well, the puppy watches her clean up their poop. And so they think, well, I have to clean up the poop. It's a nice sediment, I'm sure but it's disgusting, right? It has nothing to do with nutrition or whatever crazy wackadoodle things you guys hear on the internet. It really is a learned behavior. 99% of them outgrow it. The only exception is once they become a mother themselves, it is like an ingrained mother nature thing and sometimes they never stop doing it after that. But your puppy will outgrow it, I promise. Um, just keep telling them no, that it's it's yucky. Um, try to keep the poop cleaned up, you know. Um, it's It really, I know it's disgusting, trust me. I know it's disgusting. Um, but it has nothing to do with nutrition or anything like that. It really is because they've watched their mother do it for their whole entire lives. And so they think that that's normal. So once they get to your home, um, just kind of reinforce that, nope, we don't do that here. You know, that was a mommy thing, not a you thing. Um, and they'll, they'll outgrow it. It's really not that big a deal. Most puppies outgrow it by the age of, I don't know, probably six months old or so, usually before that. But I'm going to say six months so you don't hold me to anything. <laughs> um, but usually they outgrow it and it, it really shouldn't be a big deal. I know it's gross because they want to kiss you. So just keep reinforcing no and they, they'll stop doing it. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that since we were talking about poop. Um, so I think that's everything. Vets are going to hate this video. And so I'm going to just put my little disclosure out here that everything in this video is just my opinion. And I'm not a vet, but I have been a breeder since 2006. Sorry in advance for all you vets that might do what I mentioned in this video. Um, but that's what I've seen. So again, like and subscribe below if you want to see any new videos that I make. And again, thank you for adopting from Burner Babies. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you found this video helpful. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.